Hi, Matt Noyce. Good to be with you. Thank you so much for, uh, for tuning in. So many of you have uh, found our new YouTube channel called One Degree Outside. We appreciate you finding us and subscribing in, and I hope you find these helpful. This one is just focused on the coastal communities because this is going to be a very impactful storm for the coastline, and it, there's, there's a lot more that can be given than what tips typically in standard is done, either in some social media posts that have images or a little quick video or, or things that are like a TV weather broadcast that I used to bring you that, that are sh fairly short in duration and have to cover everybody, right? And that's great because it gives you the overview, but at the same time, I want to drill down a little bit. So let's use this opportunity to do exactly that. I'm going to bring you in and show you exactly what's going to happen at the coastline with this uh, with this April storm. So the storm center itself, here it is, as we head into Wednesday evening, uh, this evening, coming over Atlantic City, coming south of Long Island, south of Block Island. Now we're coming in at 8 a.m. Thursday morning. Storm center making its way toward the islands. It's going to cross over the Cape or maybe directly over New Bedford. Notice on the north side of the storm, you've got a ripping easterly and east-northeasterly wind, a northeast wind up and down the coast of Maine. I can zoom in a little bit, and the wind does let up near the storm center. So actually, as you'll see in a minute, some of the wind gusts will be worse when you get from, let's say, Situate to Cape Ann and then up the coastline through New Hampshire and Maine than they will be in southeastern Mass, largely because the storm center comes over you, so you have a, a shorter window on that ripping east wind. You do, you'll notice, this is Thursday at 11 a.m., have a south wind that comes into the Cape and the islands, a southwest wind under the belly of the storm. And then as we go into the afternoon, the storm comes out over Boston Harbor, pulls in a northeast wind back behind it, or a northerly wind, I should say, back behind it over Cape Ann. And now you're kind of ripping that wind at the New Hampshire and Maine seacoast, so the wind's still very gusty into Thursday evening at 5 p.m. and 8 p.m., right along the coastline uh, of Maine. So let's take a little bit of a look at some of the facets that play into this. We'll start out with ocean temperatures. This is not a surprise if you live near the coastline. Ocean temps 42 to 44, very close into the shoreline, about 40 to 42 when you get a little farther out. Same deal uh, when you make your way in across Plum Island, 42 to 44 just off the coast and 40 to 42 offshore. This is warm enough that if you live right near the immediate coastline, anywhere from Newburyport all the way down through the South Shore, you aren't getting much snow. Uh, if you get a flip at Newburyport, Report. It's going to be wet, but when you get away from the coast, we talked earlier, and that's for a different video. We talked earlier about how much snow there'll be that falls there. So let's stick with the coastline here. This is going to be your hourly wind gusts. Okay, we're going to 5 p.m. this evening on Wednesday. You can see the gusts 60 to 70 that are pulling in across portions of uh, of, of the uh, eastern uh, part of Long Island. I'm actually going to switch this over. Let me go to a little bit better. There we go. A little bit better uh, resolution, kind of a uh, a little higher detail to this thing. 5 a.m. on Thursday. There's your 50 to 60 gusts. I can zoom in a little bit. You may have that at the outer Cape. All right. You're going to have that somewhere around Gloucester running all the way up to the New Hampshire seacoast. All right. Now notice the wind begins to back off a little bit as you get near Buzzards Bay. And here it goes. Backs down even more. 8 a.m. Thursday, 20 to 30 mile per hour gust Buzzards Bay. Remember, you're near the center of the storm. The Cape starts to get out of it, too. But here we go at Gloucester, 50 to 60. And that runs all the way up the New Hampshire seacoast. Here's a big area, 60 to 70 out over the Gulf of Maine. As we go through Thursday, 11 a.m., now we start to see that coming in uh, towards Swans Island at the coast of Maine. We go forward a little bit more. It makes a run at Mount Desert Island by Thursday afternoon. And at that point, the wind is starting to let up. Uh, Gloucester at, with her, at Thursday afternoon, 2 p.m. is down to 30 to 40. So your worst wind clearly is going to be Thursday morning. This does generate some pretty big seas. Then we'll start out with 11 o'clock tonight, a 16 to 20-foot sea that starts coming south of the islands. Big expansion of that area by 2 a.m. Thursday. You've got a Thursday morning high tide. 5 a.m. Thursday, you're 16 to 20 feet. Coming into Boston Harbor, you're 13 to 16 feet right along the coast. We come in and we go to uh, 8 a.m. Thursday. Big area, 23 to 26 feet. I'll zoom you in a little bit more. You'll notice at Plymouth, you might be 13 to 16 feet but 16 to 20 feet that's coming in around Marshfield and making its way north to Situate. Look how close that 20 to 23 footers are coming. When you get along uh, Well Rock, you come farther to the north, you've got a big area, 16 to 20 feet coming into Boston Harbor. Again, that's at 8 a.m. on Thursday. You go to 11 a.m. Thursday, the seas continue to build. Just offshore Rockport and Thatcher's Island, you get 23 to 26 foot sea. Look, this is obviously a big sea in and of its own right. And then it starts to turn around by 2 p.m. Thursday, the seas begin coming down. So the worst of it, again, with the wind is going to be on Thursday morning to midday. It's a big sea in and of its own right. 
uh, but it also has a lot of power to it. And by that, I mean, if you look at the wave period, all right, this is going to start out at 11 p.m. on Wednesday, wave period, 9 to 10 seconds in Boston Harbor. That's nothing, right? Child's play. Uh, but you go farther out, 5 a.m. Thursday. Now you're building 11 to 12 seconds on your period. We go a little bit farther still. Your big expansion of 11 to 12 seconds by 8 a.m. on Thursday, 12 to 13 seconds, not only just off the coastline. Check it out. Uh, you've got 11 to 12 coming into the Outer Cape, and you've got an expansion of 12 to 13 seconds. Again, coming up toward Well Rock, making its way into Situate from basically First Cliff, running farther off to the north and west. Here you go. This is now at 11 a.m. Thursday, 13 to 14 second period. There's First Cliff, Second Cliff, all the way up through Manhill Beach. Uh, running up pretty much to Cohasset. And then if I zoom the view out and come northward a little bit, you're going to see same thing coming up toward Cape Bay and Rockport Thatcher's Island. So my concern here is beach erosion. I think you got a lot of power in these waves, a 13 to 14 second period on seas that are building 16 to 20 feet. Uh, you're going to be pounding the, the, the shoreline. And then it does, the period starts to come down too by 2 p.m. Thursday. So it really is that 5 a.m., to about 2 p.m. time frame or 5 a.m. to 11 a.m. time frame that you're focused on, but you're focused on that from Newburyport, Plum Island, Salisbury, running all the way down through Cape Ann into the South Shore. Uh, outer portion of Cape Cod, National Seashore, we reach our maximum wave period of 11 to 12 seconds, maybe up around Peep Town, 12 to 13 seconds during the late morning on Thursday. We are gonna get a beach erosion event as well. I think for many, it's going to be a minor uh, a minor beach erosion event on the Outer Cape. I think the chance of a moderate beach erosion event, which is pretty decent, is going to be in these areas we highlighted from the South Shore just south of the harbor and then running also up into Cape Ann and the North Shore for that matter as well, more vulnerable to that east-northeast and northeasterly wind. So keep that in mind. I know you just dealt with it in Salisbury. I think you got to deal with it again. In terms of the coastal flooding, it's interesting because if you look at someplace like a situate, okay, uh, we reached 12.4 feet. That's minor, just shy of moderate coastal flooding on the 11, oh, excuse me, on the uh, AM high tide uh, on Thursday. It's a mid morning high tide. But uh, if we go, let's say, and we look at someplace like Gloucester, is it any different? Honestly, not a whole lot. Minor coastal flooding, morning high tide, 12 foot uh, level. Uh, if we look at someplace like Hampton Beach, we've been hit so hard so far this season, we do come close to moderate coastal flood, moderate be 12 feet. We hit 11.8. I got to tell you, I think that we're talking about probably what's going to be something far less than what we experienced in Hampton out of those two storms earlier this year. Because remember, you blew a southeast wind out of that first. And that was the real problem for us along Hampton, along the, uh, the main coastline, the New Hampshire sea coast was a southeast wind. This is more of a standard east, northeast, and northeast. Not easy going, but it'll be better off. Now, south coast of Connecticut, you've got a problem here. Uh, this is going to be where we find some of our highest water out of the whole storm. Look at the forecast for Bridgeport, 10.9 feet as we get into Thursday morning. Keep in mind that we're talking about major flooding beginning at 11.2. Guys, if we verify a 10.9 foot uh, storm, uh, a tide water level at uh, Bridgeport, that's going to be the fifth highest on record. Seriously, all right? And so with what's going on at Bridgeport, you're talking about numerous roads will be closed near the shoreline of Bridgeport. Water Street in Norwalk, Norwalk, Connecticut goes under two feet of water from Elizabeth to Concord Street. Westport, Connecticut near Compo Beach ends up with one to two feet of water from Hills Point and Harbor Roads. And actually, if you go a little higher, then you have a major problem in Fairfield. It's not forecast to go quite that high at this point. But notice also you got moderate flooding uh, at New London Harbor. And that's going to be happening during your uh, your early high tide on Thursday. And it actually stays there for a little while because of the storm surge. So uh, south coast of Connecticut definitely hit hardest out of this. In terms of power outages, look, we looked at the fact um, that you've got the onshore wind that's going to be gusting 50, 60 miles per hour at the immediate coast. That's enough for isolated power outages. Not the same deal as up in northern New England where they have the snow that goes with it. So that's where things stand for the coastline for now. You're ready for a coastal flood event of minor to perhaps moderate proportions, although greater at the south coast of Connecticut. And you're ready for a moderate beach erosion event in those areas that we highlight. And I hope you find that this helps. Um, I certainly enjoy being able to get this information across to you. Thanks for checking in. Stay safe at the coastline.